Please be seated. I want to thank the choir and uh, Jim for their beautiful music today and the arousing music. It, it ought to get you ready for worship. It ought to get me ready for preaching. And uh, so we're I'm glad that you're here and we have this opportunity to worship God together. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Some of the most exciting times I had with youth in the churches where I served was to uh, go on canoe, 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 canoe trips uh, to, on the Buffalo River in Arkansas. Uh, with this swollen river from the spring rains and the uh, current flowing swiftly and with the treacherous rapids. Sometimes it uh, was scary, but it, it was always exhilarating. And it was exciting to have youth, especially those who were experienced the river for the first time, uh, to enter into this kind of adventure. We always had experienced guides with us, and they gave us uh, instructions that if they were followed closely, then it made, it, made the experience uh, a lot more satisfying. Uh, and if you didn't follow them, you sometimes had a great deal of trouble. Uh, there was one instruction that, the, that they always gave, which was one that needed to be heeded fully, and that was that even when you were being pushed by the current downstream, you were to keep paddling. Because you have to be a little bit ahead, a little faster than the current that's below you so that you can co control the direction in which you're going so that when you hit the rapids, you hit them the right way and you're able to maneuver those rapids. So you have to keep paddling. Well, this is instruction not only for canoeing or rafting, and uh, Julie has given us a picture of the rafting, and if I had screens in here, we'd have put those pictures up so you could see them, but uh, see how important it is to keep paddling. When I shared the title of the sermon this morning and the subject with uh, Donna Thurman, who is our print secretary and does the printing of our bulletins that I was preaching on keep paddling, and her comment was, uh, if you're gonna keep paddling, you better keep the oars in the water. And that's right. That's what we have to do. You see, we live uh, in white water, in a white water world. And these instructions about keeping paddling are important for us in our individual Christian lives and also in the life of the church. Well, you see, things change rapidly. That's true in our personal and our family lives. The paths and the steps of marriage, the, the transitions of our children, and the hopes and the headaches and the births and the deaths and the brokenness and the reconciliation, all of these things are with us and about us. And we live in a fast moving world and we have to be able to negotiate and to navigate with purpose and to know the direction in which we're going, in which our lives are going. It's also true uh, in the church. Our communication systems change rapidly and technology is upgraded almost constantly. And there's a new social media out there of of Facebook and Twitter and all of those ways in which we communicate with people today which we've never done before and we have to keep up. 
and we have to adapt. And each new generation brings its own thoughts and needs, and, and there's the expectations and the values of congregations, and there is the, the uh, clamoring for by the uh, world out there for the hearts and minds of our people. And we've got to be able to negotiate the rapids. And the way in which we do that is to, is to grow, learn, and adapt, and to strive to be the best people we can be, and to pray anew each day, and to recommit to those things that will help us to be able to do the will of God in our lives and to be the church God would have us to be in this place. Sometimes it seems that we're just pushed along and, and there's not anything we can do about it, but we can't quit paddling. We can't quit growing and learning and adapting. We have to have an agility of spirit and we have to have vision and we have to learn and grow and adapt. We have to keep paddling. That brings me to the theme of our stewardship emphasis for this year, the three R's of stewardship, renewing our spirits and rejoicing in God's blessings and responding generously in joy to the call of God when it comes to sharing our resources to make sure that the church remains the church that God wants it to be. We began this uh, emphasis with R Richard preaching on renewing our spirits, and he said the way in which we can best renew our spirits is to recommit ourselves to the, va to the vows that we took when we joined the church. And those vows were to, that we would pray, with, uh, we would support the church with our prayers and with our presence and with our gifts and with our service and with our witness. And uh, this is essential. And this is the way we renew our spirit, is to, is to recommit ourselves to be God's people. And then uh, Jay McKinney and Jimmy Murphy, the last two weeks, have inspired us as we witness to how they have found joy in the blessings of God and how they put those to use in their life, and they become an example for us. And we need that example. But this morning, I want to talk about our responding generously and graciously and committedly uh, to God's call with our resources that can make a difference in the life of the church. And this is imperative for us. For you see, we are at a, at a critical juncture in Germantown United Methodist Church. And that's because uh, we are an established, we have a wonderful church and we have great lay and clergy leadership and, and we have a committed core of people who support the church. But uh, we're no longer on the edge of growth. We're an established committee, a, a community, and we're surrounded we're bound on the east by Memphis and on the north by Cordova, on the west by Memphis and on the north by Cordova and on the east by Cargill and on the south by Mississippi. And the best way in which we can grow is to grow within ourselves. That is to grow spiritually, each one of us, and to become even more the people God would have us be. So we have to be innovative, and we have to have vision, and we have to adapt, and we have to be innovative in our evangelism, and in our mission, and in all that we do in the church so that we can reach the people about us and that we can minister and have a mission, not only to the community, but beyond. And so, the way in which we do it is that we grow ourselves to become the people God would have us be. 
And it, isn't that who we are as United Methodists? Isn't that our heritage as a church? Isn't that our heritage in, in John Wesley? The one doctrine that is peculiarly Methodist is the doctrine of Christian perfection, which was given to us by John Wesley. John Wesley's idea is that we are saved by the grace of God. But that same grace that enters us and forgives us of our sins and that God accepts us as we are is also the same grace that allows us to grow and to become better people. John Wesley's idea was that God accepts us as we are but he doesn't expect us to stay as we are. God expects us to be better today than we were yesterday and to be better tomorrow than we are today. That that's, that's who we are. And that is the challenge that comes to us as being a part of God's kingdom to grow in our faith and to become the people God would have us be. Now, John Wesley didn't believe that uh, Christian perfection meant that we were infallible or impeccable or invincible. That would only make us intolerable. But what he did believe is that we were to take the rule of love and to take the command to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength and love thy neighbor as the self as a way in which we would live. And in so doing, if we do that, then we can grow in our Christian faith and we will become the people God would have us be. This is our challenge. This is a challenge to renew our, our vision and our faith and to rejoice in God's blessings and to respond generously to the call of God to be his people. This is the same challenge that Paul gave to Timothy. This scripture which I read to you this morning is one of my favorite scriptures because it's a practical scripture for us. And I love Timothy. The, the letters to Timothy, and Paul writes to them, and Paul says to us just what I think he was saying to Timothy. In this scripture, Paul says to Timothy, uh, he, he appeals to Timothy's better nature he begins by saying, calling Timothy a man of God. Uh, he doesn't remind Timothy of his weaknesses or his inadequacies. He appeals to Timothy's better nature. He says, you're a man of God. That's, that's, the, that's the important title that you find throughout the Old Testament. Moses was called a man of God. And uh, Samuel was called a man of God. And all of those heroes, the Old Testament, so many of them are referred to as a man of God. This is what he calls Timothy. And he says, Timothy, you're a man of God. Remember your baptism. Remember your confession before God and for Jesus Christ and all of those witnesses. And then in, in remembering that, pursue righteousness and godliness and faithfulness and love and endurance and gentleness. And then he tells Timothy, and to those people around you who are rich, uh, your charge to them is not to be haughty, not to be proud of their richness, not to put their trust in the uncertainty of their riches, but to remember that everything that they have has been given to them by God, and therefore they need to be generous and willing to share and willing to serve. And that's our challenge as well. You see, God calls us to move forward. He wants us to keep paddling, to keep working, to keep striving to be the people that God would have us be, and for her church to be the church God wants us to be. And it's our responsibility to see that it happens by responding generously with our resources to make sure 
This is God's church serving in this place. This is a special Sunday. This is the Sunday nearest October the 31st. When we think of October 31st, most of us think of Halloween and uh, a time of celebrating that. And we got the opportunity to do that tonight uh, in, uh, in the OLEC in our fall fest. And we hope you'll come and bring the children. And if you don't have children, you come and enjoy this time together. And that's important. But in the Protestant tradition, October the 31st is, has, doesn't have to do with Halloween. It has to do with the Protestant Reformation. For it was on October the 31st in 1517 that Martin Luther nailed a 95 Thesis to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany and set the church free. And on the Sunday nearest October the 31st is supposed to be celebrated as Reformation Sunday as we celebrate that we've been set free, that we are saved by the grace of God, but that grace also enables us to grow and to become the people God would have us be. And so this day, let us celebrate what that means, that God enters us through his grace to forgive us of our sins, to set us free, and allow us, with his help, to grow to be the people he would have us be. Keep paddling, folks. Keep growing. Keep becoming those people. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join me in the affirmation of faith that you find in your bulletin. Will you stand and let us affirm our faith together? <laughs>